Hello everyone and welcome to Massey United Insurance's Line and Length. It's a cricket program where we look at the sport, not only in the region, but internationally as well. I'm Barry Wilkinson. Hello especially to all of our friends watching on Digicel Sports Max. With me is Andrew Seeley. And for the last couple of weeks, we've been coming to you from around the region. First Dominica, last week Jamaica. And now we are back in beautiful Barbados. And we're here for the start of the Hero Caribbean Premier League. It got off to a very exciting start on Saturday here in Barbados. And then on Sunday, it will continue in St. Lucia. Andrew, on today's program, we hear from the captain of the defending champions and also we talk to the, uh, the people involved in the WICB's professional league draft. Well, we are right here at the Aqua Beach Hotel and the draft happened and certainly some surprises came about. Some big surprises, some names that uh, were not called uh, and then some that were uh, making it by the skin of their teeth. We're going to tell you all about it right here on Mass United Insurance's line and length. It's Caribbean Premier League, CPL is in the air and when we come back we're going to head to Kensington Oval and get the celebration started. <laughs> Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance. of the Barbados Tridents team, Kyron Pollard, is going to be an exciting uh, hero CPL. First of all, Kyron, defending champions. How are you feeling about that title? Is there any, any pressure on you? Um, you know, no pressure on us. Um, you know, as I spoke to the guys, I told them, yes, we are defending champions, you know, on paper, but, you know, that's last year. We start on 11 playing field with each and every team now, so it's about playing this tournament and playing 2015, not 2014. Now, you know, you look at the fact that the Jamaica Talawas have never played in Barbados. They're actually probably the only team, uh, besides, of course, the St. Kate Patriots, a new team. The Talawas have never played here. Your good buddy Chris Gale has come to town. We've seen you guys have uh, lots of rivalry in the IPL. How are you looking forward to that game on Tuesday, uh, playing against your good old mate Chris Gale? You know, I'm looking forward to that. Um, you know, it's always fun coming up against Chris. It's either two things can happen. It's either <laughs> we get on top of him and we got to get him out early, or he takes the game away from us. But you know, he has been in extreme, extremely good form, and I guess he's out there proving a point. Um, but you know, again, we shouldn't put much much focus on him because there are ten other guys. Um, I think you know, a lot of focus goes on the, the the big the big man. But again, it's a team sport, and we have to be careful of the other ten guys because they can be dangerous, you know, as well. Now you look at the tournament overall. Some mix-ups in the teams, um, not the same squads you've had last year. Are you happy with the Trident side? Where is the strength this year? Yeah, I'm happy. I think we, we I think we're strong in in, uh, in all wrong in all departments. Um, you know, when we sat down, you know, to pick the team, you know, I said even after the draft, you know, we look for guys who are hungry to play cricket and who you know who wants to prove a point, even being out out of the national team and want to get into the international teams, and you know, guys who will play for the team. So you won't see a lot of big names in the Trident team, but you know, what you see is a you know total team effort going out there and fighting for Tridents. Were you surprised by that victory last year, or you weren't happy with how things ended against the, the Amazon Warriors? No, no surprise about it at all. You know, rules are rules. That's why you have rules in a tournament. tournament. Um, you know, at the end of the day, if we don't, if we don't have rules and regulations, you might as well do whatever you want when it comes in a tournament. So, whoever is upset about it, that's you know, that's their business. It is what it is. It's there. We didn't cheat. We won fairly. So, you know, as I said, you know, looking forward to this year, and you know, hopefully we can, you know, play good cricket and you know, entertain, especially in Barbados here first of all, and then when we travel. 2015 uh, is the kind of season that has brought a new side. Shady Freed is now playing for the St. Kitts Patriots. Is there any particular side you think on paper poses a, a threat to you? 
There's a lot of teams, you know, all the other five teams on paper, they are very strong. Um, they have their strengths, they have their weaknesses. Um, you know, what is important for us, you know, as a management team is to find the weaknesses in those teams, you know, and try to exploit it. Um, you know, for us, it's about playing, you know, the basic cricket and, you know, performing under pressure. I think in T20 cricket, it's whoever, you know, performs best under the pressure is the one that's going to come out on top. So we're going to try to take out that panic station, you know, from our game, you know, and just try to, you know, take each and every everything as a learning curve. So, you know, the guys are looking forward to it. Um, we're looking forward to, you know, playing under that pressure and playing in front of the crowds. And of course, you know, the biggest sport and party in the Caribbean here, you know, all, all of us West Indians are looking forward to that. You're one of the few players in this entire tournament that's had the advantage of playing in the CPL, the Big Bash in England, Nat West, and, uh, and of course in South Africa and the Big IPL. Uh, how do you? This is now the third year of the, of the CPL. How are you uh, rating the tournament as it stands alongside those? Um, you don't want to actually put ratings on it, but what I can actually say is that the cricket is actually getting better. Um, you know, once the wickets are good, you know, the pitches are good, you know, you tend to get better scores. If you watch your first year, you know, the batsmanship wasn't as good as you wanted to be, but then you look at last year, we had three or four hundreds last year because of, you know, the different surfaces we play on. So, you know, from the time we get good surfaces, you know, and the batsmanship is there, it's going to get better. And from what I've seen, you know, guys are working hard, teams have put in a lot of thought in their combinations, and you're seeing a total, com a total package of what you want to see for the CPL. So it is getting there and up there in terms of competition. We're getting good international stars. We have some way to go, but you know, these things happen. It's just a third year. And once it keeps getting better, I think it's only going to be good for us in the Caribbean. Finally, what to you makes a good T20 pitch? That's been a big debate in the whole world. Uh, people think it's just, uh, it just should be a flat service for batting. What makes a good T20 pitch for you? Obviously not. Um, you know, something in there for the batsmen, something in there for the bowlers. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, you can't, in the ideal world, that's what you want. But in the real world, you won't get that. So, you know, in some places, you know you're going to get a good batting wicket. And in some places, you know the ball is going to turn. Or the ball, like in St. Lucia, the ball is going to move around. That's a very good cricket and wicket down there. So, um, you know, you, you you're not going to get exactly what you want all the time, but again, it's about skill and and about you know rising above the challenge and not looking for excuses. So yes, you want the perfect bat, batting track or whatever, but what you don't want is a pitch that is turning from ball one. You don't want a pitch of just it's just seaming. Again, to find the right balance, obviously it's hard work for the groundsman, but you know if you put in the work in, in certain situations, just like in if you put in the work when you're having a job, you will be rewards. Put in the work as a cricketer, will be rewards. So if the groundsman can put in the work into the, the pitches, I guess you will, you will get something close to what we're actually looking for, for for the tournament, not just for the players to be comfortable but for, for the tournament tournament in general. I remember Kyron in the very first year there was all this big debate Trinidad and Kyron Paul are captain of the Barbados Traders. It seems like a, a memory. Do you do you feel that love now uh, after three years of doing it for Barbados? Yeah, once we keep winning the love is going to race. Hopefully <laughs> we don't start on a different trade and we start losing then it will all come back again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know for me as an I look at this as a challenge. Um, the first year when I came here again you know I didn't say much. You know I just knew that once I got the team playing the cricket that we want them to play once you know the management team and all of us buying to what we want to do the performance will speak for itself and it actually did and then last year winning speak spoke for itself so again those two years we were able to you know silence that but you don't want to just silence it and just get comfortable for me it's all about challenges and again I said 2015 is another challenge and you know I'm looking forward to that wonderful stuff for well, Kyron Pollard tried it Talawas Tuesday be here at Kensington Novo Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance.
Well, Dwayne Smith has fond memories of this ground here at Kensington Oval. It was only last year in the in the CPL that he was banging back-to-back -back centuries. Dwayne, uh, 2015, new season, new year. How are you looking forward to the challenge, especially Tuesday against the Jamaica Talawas? Um, as I said earlier in the interview, um, I'm very excited because I, I realize that we've, uh, we've got a new team, but a lot of guys that have came in that I knew that, that would strengthen our team as well. So. Um, as we had a nice game here today as well, so it's good to see that everybody's putting in the hard work and I'm sure that once, once we go out there and put in, um, stick to our plans, it's going to work for us. The, the Tridents have had the advantage in the first year and this year of playing their first games at home. Has that been something that you, you like doing? Oh, I'm thinking it's good to start at home. Well, you have your family and you have the most backing, I'm hoping, to, that, that, to have. So. Um, it's good to start here and, and to get off on, on a winning note as well, but um, I haven't said that the teams are a lot stronger this year in the CPL, so once our guys get off, as I say, to a good start, I'm sure that we're going to take it right through. I want to bring back some good memories for you. 2014, two centuries Dwayne Smith smashed here at Kensington Oval. What was that feeling like? Because the expectations every time you come to bat here, I know is always very great. Uh, I think I think for me it's, it's very special because it's at home and it's in front of my daughter who who love to see me play and love to see me perform every single game. I know when I don't perform, no one can talk to her in the house. But um, just just to get up here and, and get good performances for my team, especially uh, that's what I like doing. So and to do it in front of home crowd is extra special. You said that the team this year is not like the, the last couple of seasons. Where's the strength in the Tridents this season, in your opinion? I think we have a, a, a better all-round side now this year. Um, we have Robin Peterson who have been included. Um, we have Munarira, who, who I'm sure is going to be a, a significant um, player in our team this year. And um, um, we have Shoeb, who we all know has been performing for the last two years. So Captain Pollard, myself, everyone, Ashley Nurse, Jonathan Carter is in good touch. See Shea Hope today, he's looking very good. So um, it's good to see that our, our boys are, are, are good. Um, Ravi Rampal, who had the most wickets last year, Emirate, who's been playing a part for the last two years as well. So it's just for us to get out there, as I said, and be consistent with our, um, with our play. I asked Karen Pollard this question, I'll ask you too, because you're one of the, the fortunate few. You've played in, in a number of the World T20 tournaments, uh, you know, the Big Bash, the IPL um, in England. How is the CPL coming up to standard to you? This is the third season. Um, I, I don't really want to judge it from now. I, I'll say three, four years, then you look at it and see it. But judging from the first year up to now, I'm sure that this is going to be a better IPL, uh, CPL, sorry. Um, IPL is in my head. <laughs> but um, I'm sure it's going to be a better CPL because the teams are a lot stronger and it's going to be more competitive. So I think it's growing. Um, we've just seen one of the Indian companies come into the floor as well, so that's that's even better. Um, if we could get some other players from around the world playing, that would be extra for us as well. So um, it's just for us to keep. Um, uh, another thing I've seen that we've included um, a player each from the American yes. associates. So that's even better. So it's good to get everyone into the to the um, competition and once they do that i'm sure that this is going to get bigger and finally you know Dwayne, you look at the fact that there's a new side this year st kitts patriots uh they've come into the mix but you also have the talawas to play on tuesday the red steel on thursday let's talk a little bit about that talawas game chris gale has never come to barbados to play in a cpl this is the first time how are you looking forward to that big clash on tuesday well, i'm sure everybody's going to be looking forward to it everybody's going to come out to see chris and, and, and the others but once we stick to our tasks I'm sure we've played them in St. Kitts and he had, I don't even think he made more than six. So it's just for us to, to stick to our plans and I'm sure that we can take him down. Um, it only takes one ball. He has to make, take more than one ball to get 100. That's it. All right, great stuff. So Dwayne Smith, Barbados Trailers opening batsman, looking forward to the clash all week at the CPL. Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance.
Bill Hines is the chairman of selectors of the Jamaica franchise and Jamaica has gone for two international players, two overseas players as outlined by WICB this year in the PCL draft. Wavel, your choices. Yeah, thanks. Um, we chose Kirk Edwards from Barbados, um, international player. Not in the four at the time, but at this time, but I believe that he's very talented, has the goods with him, and I think um, giving him a new environment in Jamaica will certainly help him to get to that level. So we are happy to have Kirk Edwards in our team. And, and the other and the other player, of course, is Trevon Griffith from Guyana, young, talented um, batsman. And um, we also believe that we want to give him that opportunity. Um, he's, I'm sure that he's, he has something to offer. Has um, same with Kirk. And we think these guys are talented and we just want to provide that kind of reinforcement in keeping with the Western Circuit Board's mandate of having two persons outside of your native franchise. So we're happy it's Western Circuit and we want to cultivate um, what it means for Western um, at this level so that when they get to the Western level, I'm sure they will be familiar with what is required to share the dressing room with persons from different um, environment and background and appreciate and respect the beliefs of each other, but with one mind and goal, which is to uh, one goal in mind, sorry, which is to, to, to represent the West Indies very well. So it starts on the franchise level and we are happy to make a contribution where that is concerned. In terms of your choices, you've chosen two batsmen. Uh, obviously, you probably feel pretty comfortable with your bowling department at the Jamaica franchise. Yes, I think we have a decent bowling attack. Um, no disrespect to the bowlers who we didn't choose. But I'm just saying that given what we had with a young bowling squad, um, Marquina Minley, Jason Dawes, these guys are doing well. We've got... Um, Damon Jacobs, who is not uh, exactly a youngster, but pretty new to first class cricket. And of course, he's supported by um, the outstanding Nikita Miller. So those are four main bowlers. And we've got other guys in the squad, David Bernard Jr., um, leading all around, uh, very senior. So I think we're, we're pretty okay with the bowling. Um, John Campbell, Tamar Lambert does a bit of bowling. And there are other fast bowlers within our group mm -hmm. as a franchise that will be offered paper play contracts. So. I think we are pretty decent. Sheldon Catchell is in our secure player. So we've got a few guys that we will look forward to. In terms of the tournament, how it went last year, the inaugural year, obviously there were some hiccups, but generally, how did you view the, the concept of double round uh, and also the split with the Nagico Super 50 coming actually like in the middle of the competition? I think the, the concept is very good. Of course, it was the first year. Infancy always come about with feeding and, and feeding always bring about of new problems and things that you are unforeseen. Having said that, I think the WICB has so far has done a good job in giving a couple more breaks between the rounds in the, in, in the four-day cricket just to give the players time to recover. It's a lot of traveling, inter-island traveling, and, and players have to moving around a short notice after playing games. So there's not a lot of time for recovery which is key to the development of our players to make sure that they, are, they recover as best as possible so that they can give themselves. And of course, some time between the competitions, our, our one-day tournament is smack in the middle of the four-day competition. Um, playing a lot more one-day cricket is always best for me, if, if you ask me, because the one-day cricket um, brings about, um, the 50 or brings about the, the, the gap between T20 and, and the four days. Um, that is not on the cards to date, but we look to improve that as well. But in terms of extending the season for home and away, that is excellent. Um, I believe that four-day cricket, um, you call it red ball, wide close cricket, <laughs> is the base cricket. That's a real cricket. I'm a purist, and I believe that once you can master your craft in four-day cricket, um, you can play any version of the game. So playing more four-day cricket will give our players more chance to develop. And of course, even our elite players will have an opportunity to come home and fix whatever issues they have at the international level because it's an extended season which sometimes runs concurrent with the home series and we want to um, keep that going. So I think it's good for West Indies cricket and I hope that we will keep improving on it. Um, I hope the franchises through the CEOs, head coaches, um, captains will iron out the problems I have, note them and we'll sit and discuss them and try in another year or two to get this competition to a real professional competition that will stand out and produce um, high quality players that will represent the West Indies and move us up the ranking as we are now. One question, one further question before you go, Wavell. And there has been some, some discussion about the whole question of the WICB having its own regional T20 tournament now, because we do have the CPL which starts uh, basically today. But in terms, of having, in terms of having our own local or regional CPL, how, what's your view on that? Well, I would have to believe that the, the, the CPL is, is our local competition. The West WICB just, I think, um, gave the, 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 the license to the CPL um, organizers to run it. Um, West Indies is still a shareholder in, in the CPL, I believe. 
And I think um, if you're asking that we play more CPL or T20 more cricket, T20. cricket locally, then more cricket is always good for anybody. Um, I would like to see more four days uh, and mm -hmm. more one days because I think once we get the fundamentals right, as, as cricketers, certainly um, your game will improve and you'll be able to, to, to master any version of the game. So it is, it is there to proof. Um, a couple of players would have gone through T20 first and into tests and would have been successful that David Warner comes to mind. But by and large, I think most players master um, the longer version of the game first and then they trans, um, transfer their talents and transition into to, to the shorter version. So I am always a big believer in 4 cricket. I'm a big believer in playing the longer version of the game. And certainly once you have mastered the craft there, the sky is the limit in any version of the game. Okay, that's uh, Wavell Hines. He's the chairman of selectors from the Jamaica franchise. We are here at the Acro Beach for the WICB PCL Draft. Across the Caribbean, more people are placing their trust in Massey United Insurance for the protection of the things that are important to them, their homes, businesses, and their prized possessions. That's because Massey United Insurance offers excellent general insurance coverage to help you manage whatever life sends your way. Our cadre of well-reputed agencies and trained insurance professionals are always ready to provide you with sound advice and prompt service. Choose the security and sound strength that is Massey United Insurance. Welcome back to Mass United Insurance's Line and Life and we are here at the Acro Beach Hotel for the West Indies Cricket Board second annual PCL draft and Gus Logie is the head coach of Trinidad and Tobago. Gus, your choices for 2015-16? Yeah, we look at Kyle Hope, um, a young batsman. I think he's played for CCC, uh, a lot of potential and I guess we all need some hope at this point in time. <laughs> um, so we looked at him as one of the players that we will look forward to for the future as well and um, also in Krumah Bonner. Banner, who has had a lot of experience at the CCC level, played for Jamaica, also played for West Indies in the early days. We feel he's an individual who can add some variety to our uh, batting as well as our bowling. You've had one year of this draft uh, going in. Uh, first time around, uh, Trinidad and Tobago had actually picked Ranores Sarawan and it didn't work out. I'm sure you're hoping that for better from both Hope and Bonner. Yeah, we do. I think first of all, we hope that they are fit. <laughs> I think that's one of the stipulations for them being in the draft, that, um, that they are fit and um, ready to go. Uh, we trust that we will make them welcome in Trinidad and Tobago and uh, they will want to be there as well, to be part of something that I believe will be quite special this year. Interesting picks in that both of these uh, guys are uh, early or middle order batsmen, which suggests that you are pretty comfortable with your bowling attack at this stage. Yeah, I think from last year we have introduced in our a 10 uh, Ram Paul, we have now Kevin Cooper. We also have Marlon Richards, we have Emirate as well. We also will be looking forward to Rich, uh, Shannon Gabriel as well for the season. So we feel we are um, quite well served in that department, our spin department as well with Akil Hussein. We also have uh, Imran Khan who has been the leading wicket taker for us. Um, Jason Mohamed bows a bit of off spin as well. And as I said, Nkrumah bows a bit of leg spin. So I think we are well served in that area. And um, of course, even when we pick the draft team, the 15 players, it means you can still go outside of that. We still have people like Narayan and they who are shown interest in playing for Trinidad Tobago once they are available, so we look forward to them as well. In terms of the overall tournament, the regional four day with a double double round and also the Nagico Super 50, how did it go in terms of how you how you viewed it organizationally? Well, I think the intentions were good. I think having to play three or four rounds of 40 cricket and then have a break in between to play 50 over cricket and then start again, um, it poses own challenges for the players in terms of their own preparation and the type of preparation necessary. I think that's why last year I felt we had two teams playing. We had mm -hmm. one basically for 40 and one basically for the 50 over. What we would like to have is see how we can incorporate all the players in the 40 as well as the 50 over. So it's going to present its own challenges, but I think it's challenges that the players are up for. I think the fitness level levels of the players have improved over the years and will continue to improve and I think at the end of the day is something that we want to really encourage the players to play all formats. 
Any thoughts of an international player of Trinidad and Tobago Red Force bringing in an international player for the PCL or the Nagico? I think it's been touted. I think it, uh, the greatest setback obviously would be finances. Mm -hmm. I think if we can get a generous sponsor, I have no doubt that we looked at. We looked at people like Brendan Taylor earlier on, even Brendan Nash earlier mm -hmm. on to bring into the setup. So it's all about funding. And I think if we can get the funding, I'm certain we'll look at that. So that's it for our show. Hope you've enjoyed it. Of course, you can continue to follow us at Line Length on Twitter, or you can also send us an email to cricket at lineandleth.net. Thanks again to Andrew Seeley, um, who, of course, spoke with Gus Logie, the former West Indies player, and Wavell Hines as well. And earlier, we saw Kyron Pollard and Dwayne Smith. All the best then for the CPL. It's going to be five weeks of fantastic action, and you can follow us right here on Massey United Insurance's Line and Length.